Good afternoon, and thank you for your patience during this very difficult time. My name is Dave Kerner. I serve as the Executive Director of the Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles, uh, which includes the Florida Highway Patrol. We're gathered here in uh, St. Lucie County. We're surrounded by our partners in law enforcement. We have uh, State Representative Toby Overdorf, local state representative, sir. We thank you for being here. Uh, we have members of FDLE, uh, Sheriff Snyder from Martin County, St. Lucie County Sheriff Keith Pearson, of course, Colonel Howes from the Florida Highway Patrol. And we're joined by uh, Fort St. Lucie Police Chief Richard Del Tero and Fort Pierce Police Chief, I may get this wrong and I apologize, uh, Diana Hobley Burney. So I'll start this, this press conference off uh, saying it's a very sad and difficult day in the state of Florida, in this community, for the profession of law enforcement and for the Florida Highway Patrol in particular. I'll also add that we're going to give some details about what we know. We're not going to comment on what we, we, what we don't know. Um, and we're not going to take questions during this particular press conference. After we speak, uh, we will deliver information through the normal uh, flow of communication through our public affairs officers. What I can tell you as far as what we've been briefed on and what we're aware of to be fact is that uh, I was notified at 3.29 a.m. Uh, this morning by Colonel Howes that there was believed to be um, an imminent line of duty death at the State Trooper was still with us, but it was not looking very positive. Uh, thereafter, we traveled with senior members of the command to the hospital here in St. Lucie County, and we had an opportunity to meet the family and were subsequently informed that we lost one of the members of the Florida Highway Patrol. During that time period, and we're going to talk about him by name in just a moment, but I, I want to share with you some of, uh, some of the interactions and emotions that we had with the family. Um, the trooper is uh, left behind a fiance, a stepmother that was essentially his mother and his father. Trooper Zachary Zink is, uh, was 26 years old. And Colonel Howes will talk about his history with the Florida Highway Patrol, a very proud history. Um, and he was a beloved trooper within his troop here in Troop L. We got to share uh, some interactions with the family who obviously were very distressed about losing their loved one. Uh, we were, of course, surrounded by hundreds of law enforcement officers and firefighters. We then learned more about what actually happened a uh, trooper was in the process of apprehending a fleeing felon on the interstate. During the course of that pursuit, as I understand it, the uh, fleeing felon attempted to do a U-turn. State trooper executed a U-turn and was involved in a very serious crash that took his life and unfortunately also the life of the gentleman driving the semi-truck. It is a horrific outcome and it's one that hurts us dearly. From there, there was a uh, continuation of the pursuit, as I understand. Uh, the suspect eventually crashed his vehicle and uh, fled the scene. There was a manhunt. All these members of, of law enforcement and their respective departments participated. At this time, we do have one suspect in custody and Colonel Howes will brief you in a little bit more detail on, on what he is aware of as well. Uh, while we were at the hospital, um, we were able to perform a very dignified procession uh, to the medical examiner's office with the family, with the state trooper. Uh, we were able to spend time with him and say our final goodbyes. And then he was, uh, the procession occurred to the medical examiner's office, and then we came straight here. 
Our goal throughout this investigation, this is a very serious investigation. This is a very high level briefing that we're giving you, but our goal is to give you as much detail as possible. But given that it is a very active criminal investigation um, with, as I understand, three parties uh, deceased at this point because of a subsequent crash that happened after the manhunt was completed, um, we have to make sure that we get this exactly right, as we always do. Trooper Fink was, uh, is a hero. Trooper Fink died in the line of duty. Uh, as his stepmother relayed to me that since he was six years old, all he's ever wanted to do was help people. And if you think about the manner in which he lost his life today, It was the very essence of helping people. He was in the active pursuit of a felon. He was protecting this community from harm. And he gave his life and sacrifice for the protection of the ones that he loved and people that he didn't even know. And in my short time at this department, I think that's come to define what it means to be a state trooper and what it means to be a law enforcement officer. This agency has a proud history since 1939, we're celebrating our 85th anniversary this year, and this will mark the 53rd state trooper that we've lost in the line of duty. We honor his service, we pray for all the families who have lost loved ones today, and we remain hyper-focused and solely focused on bringing justice through the criminal justice process and the criminal justice system. At this time, I'll turn it over to Colonel Gary L. Howes, the second of the Florida Highway Patrol, and then we'll have some other speakers as well. Colonel. Good afternoon. I think, I think it's afternoon. But uh, Colonel Gary Howes of your Florida Highway Patrol, and some of the information I'm going to relay to you is a little repetitive from Director Kerner, and thank you, Director Kerner. Um, he's a Governor DeSantis appointed the director earlier this year, and it has been a breath of fresh air for the Highway Patrol, and we thank you for your leadership, sir. Uh, just to provide a little bit of a timeline for you, at 2.40 a.m., uh, St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office had contact with a white Kia. A deputy sheriff identified a white Kia on West Midway Road. Uh, the vehicle was driving reckless at least twice the, the legal speed limit, and the deputy sheriff attempted to do a traffic stop, and as she approached the the suspect vehicle took off. Uh, a short uh, pursuit ensued, after which the deputy sheriff disengaged. Uh, the vehicle uh, continued off, and eight minutes later, at 2.48 a.m., Trooper Zachary Fink identified the same vehicle. From, from what we understand now, we don't know that he had any idea that it was related to the earlier incident. But he identified this vehicle driving in a reckless manner, again, uh, well over the speed limit, but, but most importantly, it got his attention as being reckless and endangering the public. Trooper Fink attempted to stop the vehicle, but he refused to stop. A pursuit ensued. Trooper Fink, while behind the vehicle, the vehicle attempted to enter onto the southbound lanes of Interstate 95. As the white Kia entered those southbound lanes, the driver made an abrupt turn to travel the wrong direction on Interstate 95. Trooper Fink, in an attempt to continue to apprehend the subject and or warn unsuspecting motorists of the immediate danger in the area, turned also with the vehicle and unfortunately turned into the immediate path of a semi-tractor trailer which struck the left driver's side of his patrol car. As the director mentioned, unfortunately, the, the truck driver was pronounced deceased on the scene, and Trooper Fink uh, was critically injured and airlifted to Longwood Regional Medical Center, after which he also came to his injuries.
The white Kia then continued the wrong direction on the interstate, now being pursued by sheriff's deputies and state troopers, uh, other state troopers that were in the immediate area of the time of the, the collision with the semi-truck remained there and provided first aid and it attempted life-saving measures to the truck driver and also to Trooper Fink. And as I said earlier, unfortunately, the, the truck driver, professional driver, uh, did not survive. As the vehicle fled, uh, it was eventually involved in a crash where it struck a tree, ran off the road and struck a tree. The, the suspect fled on foot, after which a manhunt ensued involving multiple agencies. And I would like to thank specifically uh, Sheriff Pearson, Sheriff Staley, uh, all of our local law enforcement agencies that was immediately uh, on scene and helped with those efforts. Uh, and specifically the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office, who not only on scene assisted us, but also have, has continued on and is taking the lead on the criminal investigation uh, of this incident. The, uh, the multi-agency search did identify a person of interest, and that person was apprehended at 8.06 a.m. Again, it's an ongoing criminal investigation, and, and beyond that, I'm really not going to, I'm not able to talk at this time uh, about the person that's in custody. But again, I would like to shake to thank the sheriffs, both of them, and our local law enforcement for their unwavering support. A little bit about Trooper Fink. As the director said, Trooper Fink was 26 years old. Three-year veteran of your Florida Highway Patrol. He graduated from the 146th basic recruit class in December of 2020. His first duty assignment was in Troop D, Orlando, which covers the Central Florida area. After serving his proper time, uh, the, the minimum service that he has to do there, he transferred to this area. This was home for him. So he transferred to Troop L. Port St. Lucie was the city of assignment, and he worked this district uh, for, a short amount, for a short amount of time uh, where his family resides. The director mentioned his mother, his father, his fiance are all residents of St. Lucie County. I tell our recruits when they graduate that they raise their right hand and they take a solemn and binding obligation to protect and serve our community. But the truth is, they take that obligation, but their family bears the burden of that. And we recognize that, and our thoughts and our prayers remain with the Finks during this difficult time. And they're part of our Highway Patrol family and will remain a part of that family forever. Trooper Fink, his family, as the director said, relayed to us that at age six, he told his mom and stepmother that, you know, mom, I just want to help people at age six. And that today, he was living his dream doing just that as a Florida State Trooper. The sacrifice that law enforcement first responders make every day. We hear the term, they've made the ultimate sacrifice. And that's really a misnomer because the sacrifice is in life, not in death. The sacrifice is not being there for special events with your family. It's not being there for breakfast in the morning that, that Zach's not going to be out with his fiance. The sacrifice is in life. He was tragically taken from us by a felon, a fleeing felon, a criminal, and that's a tragedy. Again, I'd like to thank our law enforcement partners, and again, just remind you, this is very preliminary, and as if more information is learned and we're in a position that we can release further details that are accurate, uh, I promise you we will do that in the normal means, as the director said. So thank you. Sheriff Pearson. Oh. It's an extremely tragic event that we've uh, seen unfold today. Um, the, at the second crash site, uh, a massive manhunt did ensue, and uh, it wasn't for the just the sheriff's office alone. We had FDLE, we had the city of Port St. Lucie, Fort Pierce Police Department, um, 
U.S. Marshal Services and our two adjoining counties, Martin County Sheriff's Office and Indian River County Sheriff's Office. Um, all working together, we were able to take a suspect into custody, which we're currently interviewing, and uh, we're going to make sure that working close with the Florida Highway Patrol and the Traffic Homicide Unit, that we'll be able to provide justice to uh, Trooper Finks, uh, the truck driver uh, himself, and the family as well. Our thoughts and prayers are with them. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Chief Del Toro. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you all for being here today, again, for this tragic moment in law enforcement. On behalf of Mayor Martin, our city council, and our entire family at the city of Port St. Lucie, I want to offer our deepest condolences to our family at the Florida Highway Patrol and to also the Fink family. I'm very proud and thankful today for our officers, deputies, uh, from all the agencies that responded and the collective efforts they did. It was the absolute definition of teamwork. It was a massive, massive manhunt this morning that lasted over four hours, and we were able to bring this suspect uh, into custody. He's very dangerous to this community as evident by the crash that happened and the ensuing crash that happened after that. But I'm very thankful for their efforts and very uh, proud and honored uh, to have participated in this in honor of Trooper Fink and uh, his dedicated service to this community. So thank you all again for being here. Um, were there any other law enforcement officials or officers that wanted to make any comments before uh, we make our final comments? Um, so, there's nothing else that I could add that hasn't been said, but I think it, we should take this moment as a community. You know, St. Lucie County, the Treasure Coast, the state of Florida uh, has a proud history of supporting its law enforcement officers. We have no doubt that uh, the Fink family and these law enforcement officers will be overwhelmed with the love and support that is put back uh, into the sacrifice that was made today. And it also comes at a very sensitive moment in the history of the Florida Highway Patrol. As we recall, Trooper Joseph Bullock was shot and killed on I-95 four years ago uh, in Martin County, just south of here, on February 5th of 2020. Uh, the Florida Highway Patrol and its partner agencies will recognize and continue to grieve the loss of, troop, of Trooper Bullock um, as we also find our way through the loss of our current state trooper, Zachary Fink, who we lost today. We appreciate your patience. We appreciate your support. Uh, we appreciate your sensitivities as we work through a very complex and very serious criminal investigation. Again, that criminal investigation is being led by St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office, and the traffic homicide portion of this case will be led by the Florida Highway Patrol. As I stated earlier, uh, when we started this press conference, uh, following the conclusion, which is uh, very shortly, our, our normal communication channels will flow through um, our, our public affairs officers at the Florida Highway Patrol and through the other PAOs at the other agencies. We thank you again for your patience and your time, and that will conclude our press conference. Can you at least talk about the criminal history of the Hello, I'm Lieutenant Miranda with the Florida Highway Patrol Public Information Office. At this time, we're not disclosing information in regards to the subject or his criminal history. This is still an ongoing investigation. We will disclose more of his identity and his information and his history once we have concluded a little bit more of the investigation at this time. Can you talk about the current state of traffic right now. We know I-95 will shut down north and south for a while. Is there an update what drivers can expect? It is suspected that it's going to be shut down for a little bit longer. We don't have exactly an ETA or estimated time that is going to be open. We are currently doing a lot of measurements. This is a very in-depth investigation. Um, just north of that, we also had another traffic fatality. I am going to touch base on that uh, before going into that um, case. I will conclude with, um, it's very sad, a sad day for the Florida Highway Patrol. We mourn with the family, not only of our trooper, but also with the family of the truck driver who unfortunately lost his life within this case as well. So there are three deaths here. You mentioned three at the top of the press. There's, at this time, we're speaking about the involvement of the trooper incident, and there's two deaths within that case. We have a second case, non-related to this trooper incident, that involved a fatality, and I will speak later about that. And that was north or south? We were here south. 
I can confirm in a, in a bit about that, okay? I'm gonna, if you guys have anything else in English, I'm gonna resume in Spanish. Just one more question. We had seen some pictures of a sheriff's deputy patrol car that was also mangled um, near where the white key was found. Is this related to that incident and is that deputy okay? No, ma'am. We spoke to uh, the sheriff's office and that incident is unrelated to our trooper's um, death or the crash. What is the suspect being charged with? I'm sorry? What is the suspect being charged with? He's a person of interest and he's being questioned. So right now he's in temporary custody until we can confirm what charges we would proceed with. Do you have the name of the truck driver who died? We're now releasing that information as we need to speak to his family for next of kin. And as far as the direction that the suspect and trooper was traveling, it was northbound and southbound lanes? He was traveling northbound in the southbound lanes of Interstate 95. He continued traveling the wrong way on I-95 and then exited. Uh, one more question for me. Because there was a second incident where troopers and obviously deputies had pursued that white Kia instead of staying at the scene of the accident, was that difficult responding to that with more resources being diverted towards that chase? That's a question with that department that we need to take place with St. Lucie Sheriff's Office and they could further assist you with that. Our focus here is the incident that occurred with our officer. Do you mind walking us through once again how he was, how, how he collided with the semi truck? He was making the U turn on 95 and the truck collided with the trooper, is that correct? Um, the vehicle, the suspect vehicle made a U turn on I 95 to travel the wrong way, in which Trooper Fink made a U turn and was struck by a semi tractor trailer near mile marker 120 southbound at approximately. 257 in attempt to apprehend the subject vehicle and also make aware of the traffic that was also traveling to avoid another collision. And then someone picked up the chase from there and chased him several miles until he hit The other troopers who were also um, within the pursuit continued traveling to um, apprehend this fleeing subject. And how, how far was, was that closest spot? Was it several miles or just there three? It's about two miles off. The interstate, or less than two miles. Was the fleeing subject who collided with the tree? Was he injured and taken to the hospital too? Um, he's currently in custody. He doesn't appear to have any serious bodily injuries. Is that at the Sydney County Jail? Um, unknown at this time, ma'am. Do we know why he was fleeing in the first place? We do not at this time. That's still under investigation. He was traveling a vehicle very recklessly, fleeing from law enforcement, and lost control of his vehicle. At this time, this vehicle was not reported stolen. When you say driving recklessly, obviously, we you know that he was driving at one point twice the speed limit, but does that mean he was also swerving on the road? What does reckless mean? He was traveling the wrong way on I-95. That's reckless enough. Approximately 120th mile marker.